Ladies and gentlemen, here we are on episode 7 of Behind the Banter. And a lot has been going on today. And I mean, some of us might be facing a little bit of scrutiny. Me, per se. I'm a little sick, so I've been taking care of myself. But this guy, the scrutiny that's coming from the judge and the jury, the whole damn courthouse, is he was drinking. He was day drinking, for instance, and on a roof. For a little bit. And the reason this wall makes sense is because the judge, the jury, and the roof? It's because uh, there, there's a certain New York Yankee by the name of Aaron Judge, and he likes to hit those balls over the fucking roof. Aaron Excuse Judge. my French. Aaron, Aaron Judge does love hitting balls. And let me tell you, even though I've been on a roof, perhaps, having a couple beers today in the sun, you can't judge me for the take that Aaron Judge will be a future Hall of Famer. It's certainly looking like it. Because, oh my, that guy is unbelievable. The only knock against him is his age. But what he is doing is simply... What do you mean his age? He, he, didn't get, he didn't get it going early enough. That's the thing is you need Dude. to see when everything kind of peaks and he hits his, his peak. We're going to see how it looks. But it does look like he is on pace for... Uh, he's 32! Uh, yeah, exactly. He's 32. Yeah. And he's had how many seasons? Like, he's had... How many seasons of... You need four? He has 60... He has four... The last four seasons, he had, he went 39, 62, 37. He's currently at 49 home runs. My point being is just to even get 200 more homers, he has to hit 50 home runs at minimum for four more seasons. I don't care if he had 200 uh, I'm more just, home runs. I'm just saying. His age is the only potential knock, even though I agree with you that he will be a Hall of Famer. Dude, that guy... I mean... He, to put it in context, he has the best numbers currently of a player that is not linked with steroids since Ted Williams in 1958. So the last time we've seen a season like this from a guy was 1958. The other guys that have had seasons like this have all been linked with taking steroids in their past, a.k.a. Barry Bonds. You know where I'm going with that. But the things we're witnessing with this guy is just unbelievable. Like he man. I have a good I have a good buddy who's a Yankees fan. Shout out Scout. Shout out Scout. And he used to hate Aaron Judge. I don't know how. Like he's early so, on, he so used to hate him. Aaron Judge. He used to be like, oh, you're like Judge, he's just gonna hit home runs, he's gonna bat like low average. But I mean this year. The guy is hitting 330. He currently is the second best batting average in the in the uh, MLB behind Bobby Witt Jr. He has 49 home runs, which is first. He has 119 RBIs, which is first. The triple crown wash. And he has, and he, of course, like with those stats all compiling, he is leading the league in OPS. It's just that guy's unbelievable. The figure the guy has, the power, the aura. I I just simply don't think. Like, the guy doesn't have a build... Like, at least with Barry Bonds, when he's taking steroids, you look at him from his Pirates days to his Giants days, where he clearly was roided. There's a clear difference. Sammy there. Sosa. Right. Like, there's certain guys you look... Mark McGuire, yeah. Jose Canseco. You look at all these guys before and after, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. And then you look at Judge, and there's just never a point where you're there's like... There's never... He's never had a problem. Yeah, he's just... He's never had a problem. Like, he is an all-around... Just like he's what Jeter was to the uh, to the Yankees, Yankees then, yeah, right. minus the championships. But. Right. I mean, like, but I mean, shit, the Yankees could win this year. Uh they could. They could, dude. They him could. and him and Juan Soto, which going off of Aaron Judge, another Yankee that's absolutely tearing it up this season. So there was a point this Wednesday where Juan Soto had nine hits, his last nine hits, eight of them were home runs. Unreal. And then the the ninth was a three run double. Didn't down, he already, down the left field line. Didn't he already beat his career high for homers this season, too? I, could check I believe that one of the ones he had this previous week was it set the mark for his career high in home runs. For one season, obviously. Well, I mean, you look at the MLB home run leader list, number one is Aaron Judge, number five is Juan Soto. Like, he's hitting two ninety seven, which is 12th in the MLB. Um, I have one thing about Soto that's just crazy. And yes, you're correct. Anyway. He did... He already has surpassed his season high in home runs. I think the craziest part is the guy's 25 years old. 25. He's 25 years old. Like, you feel like he's in his 30s. Like, you feel like he's 
He's he's really has been in the league just as long as Aaron Judge. He's been in the league since 2018. Yeah, and Aaron Judge was a rookie 2017. I mean, and he played 116 games in 2018. Like he like he's been there. He won a cha- he won a World Series. He Judge has been Judge started in 2016, so two oh, seasons yeah. prior. But 2016, he played 25 games. Yeah, so saying he bounced so, in and out. Um, so realistically, Juan Soto has one more year. Or one less year than of experience than I mean, Aaron Judge. Judge has the MVP. Soto does have the uh, the ring, and he played a very pivotal part in that ring. Same with uh, Scherzer, Trey Turner too. That was such a crazy Nationals team. All right, hypothetical, ready? Yeah, let's see. Let's say that you made it to the MLB, mm-hmm. and you had the opportunity to select a genie. Popped to you. He said, "Hey, I have a question for you." I'm going to give you one of these. An MVP ring, or an MVP trophy, or a World Series ring? World Series. What are you picking? World Series. World Series. You won an MLB championship. If you're competitive, you're an... Obviously, the MVP is cool. Like, means you're the best of the best. But just getting that to hold the trophy, you and your team, you you had one common objective to win a championship. And, like, no championship team just absolutely rails over everyone unless you're the 2005 White Sox who lost one game. Um, But... Even yeah. if you were, even let's say, you won the MVP as a player like Aaron Judge, that was your career, or you won a World Series. What is my career as role? a journeyman? As a journeyman, so you never were an All Star. Is it like Brock Holt's uh, World Some, Series MVP? Something like that. Like I get a World Series MVP. You don't get a World Series MVP. Uh. You you're just on the roster. See, now like Albert Almora Jr. on the Cubs, twenty sixteen. Just I'm, a random. I'm kind of inclined. To to go ahead and say the MVP simply because right. of all the money you'd make from well, it? Well, not even that, but it's just like you actually have an established career and you have a shot at the Hall of Fame. What about your, like, uh... Well, yeah, no, there's that too. I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, who's the guy that was on some championship teams that was just in the league for a long time that was pretty impactful, people know him, but he was never that MVP. That's the guy I'm trying to think of. Because, like, if you were to put me on that level where you're in the... Like, Zobrist. Ben Zobrist. In the league for a long time... Got the championship. Like, I'm happy he was with it. Minus the wife MVP. stuff. He was a World Series MVP. Yeah, minus the wife stuff. And Ben Zobris was also an all-star. He was a multi-time all-star. Yeah, but he's still a journeyman in the long run. I wouldn't call him a journeyman. I would not call Ben Zobris a journeyman. No. I'd, like, I'm, like, a journeyman, I'm talking about Jamie Moyer. Like, Edwin, J- Edwin Jackson. Uh, That's yeah. a journeyman. Octavio a fringe, Dota. fringe triple A guy. Not, a, not even a fringe triple A guy, but just a guy like he's continuously going to be on MLB rosters, but he just bounces from team to team. Typically, bad teams that need like their fifth starter or their fourth starter. You know what I mean? Just like a guy. Like Johnny ben Zobrist. The past ben Zobrist is not a journeyman. He's a good ball player. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like Edwin Jackson, that's a journeyman because he never had like I think he had one All Star season. He follows my old Twitter. Just I mean, he, like, props to the guy. He, like, literally pitched in MLB for, like, 16 years. But it's like he would just go from one team, one season, next team, maybe two seasons. Rich Hill? Like, yes. That's a journeyman. Rich Hill. That's a journeyman. Okay. Not Ben Zobrist. Dick Mountain, Rich Hill. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nickname. I've never heard that before. It's like, really? Because, like, Rich Hill. Dick Mountain. Like, another name for Rich is Dick, and then Hill, Mountain. Like uh, Lance, I understand Lynn. it. Lance Lynn's unofficial nickname is the Big Bastard. I've heard that. That fits him though. Well, he yeah, he kind of is an asshole. Yeah, it, it's pretty fun when he's on your team and he's like has a, a phenomenal start and he's like doing like the the ball grabs like woo strike three uh, struts <laughs> and then there's a whole different monster when he gives up five runs through two innings. Right. It just doesn't play. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't play. That's a journeyman in my opinion, Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn at. Really? You think uh, he's a journeyman? How many teams has he been on? Uh, he's been on a good amount, but he's finished top five in Cy Young multiple times. He's been pretty good, all-star a lot. I know, but like, would you, I mean, but like, still, I, I would consider, because like, you never consider Lance Lynn as an elite talent. Maybe one year. Maybe one year you did. On the Cardinals. <sighs> he was really good for a long time. He was really good up until the past, like, two years. He had, uh, the 2021 Sox, when Lynn was on there... He pitched to like a sub three ERA, I'm pretty sure, or right around. I mean, really. Good. Lance Lynn's really pretty good. good. I, I don't know about that whole journeyman nonsense with him. Um, let's see. Let's see. He's 37 years old. 
with a career ERA of 375. Yeah, 21, 2021, 269. 2022, 399. I mean, he hasn't had a positive war season since 22. So the last two seasons. I mean, he's a 3.75. Career year, right? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, that. that's pretty good. He's been in the league for double digit year. I mean, he's not a journeyman. He's been too elite too many years. To... But I mean, like, when he was elite, he was those earlier Cardinal teams where the Cardinal teams were just really good, too. Yeah, but if you call Ben Zobris not a journeyman, you can't call Lance Lynn a journeyman fair. based on the logic that's you just fair. said. That's fair. So, I mean, I get it. I get it. However, talking about these journeyman slash MVP slash World Series MVP players, I'd like to have a little discussion with you and the, and the people in the audience and chat of naming some current some current MLB players that are that are Hall of Famers. That will see their way into the Hall of Fame, whether that be in five years or twenty-five years. Uh, there's one golden goose we're going to agree on, right? Clayton Kershaw. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. Him and Verlander have already done too much from pitching. And Scherzer. Uh, yeah, Scherzer. Scherzer. I was going to say the most guaranteed Hall of Famer, even though he has so much left to play, is Otani. I wouldn't say he's he's not the only guaranteed. I I just say he is the largest guarantee to make the Hall of Fame if he just keeps it up. Just because he's pitched and he if hits. If he keeps, I mean, yeah, but that's, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. If he Mookie Betts? He keeps it up. Yep, for sure. But those, like, those, those three pitchers, though, Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, and Clayton Kershaw, sure fire Hall of Famers, in my opinion. There's no way those guys do not make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, no, those guys have been too good for too many years. Like, unbelievably good. Uh, what about Freddie Freeman? He's a fringe guy. I'd say yes. I mean, oh. he's, he's 2,000 plus career hits. Like, he's, I think his career average is over 300. Championship. Championship. Did you ever win MVP? MVP? Right? Yeah. yeah, 2020, exactly. him and Abreu. I mean, dude, him and he, he's awesome. He's fantastic. What about Jose Altuve? Um, that's a tough one because that guy has, like, what, the most postseason homers? But he also has a cheating scandal attached. So, I... if that's the case. I feel like they might give him the Barry Bonds treatment. No. I don't think you can give Jose Altuve that treatment. I mean, he won championships when he Yeah, but it wasn't... It was the... Like, yeah, it was the team, and it wasn't... Barry Bonds directly influenced... Like, he took steroids for multiple years, which directly influenced his game. There was a cheating scandal. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm the same way. Like, I, I don't like that, but, like... It's not. He's still I, been good. It's for not. Years. It's not only attached to Jose Altuve. It's attached to yeah. that team. His counterpart, Carlos Correa, he looked like he was going to be a Hall of Famer for so long, yeah. and then those injuries just he just couldn't. He never. He could never get over it. I mean, same with Altuve. He's got a three oh six career average. Altuve is just. He's good, man. He's got two hundred twenty twenty six. Two hundred twenty six uh, career bombs. I'm trying to. Think. You're taller than him. Yeah. He's 5'6". Five, 5'8". Six. Six. Yeah. Five, Let's go. Four kings. I'm trying to think. Who else is just a, a Hall of Famer? Uh, Jose Ramirez. I mean, I we talked... Like we, were, case. we were talk- Aaron Judge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aaron Judge is Hall of Famer. I was going to say, I don't... Ronald Acuna, I feel like, was on pace, but I feel like he's just had two huge ACL injuries, so those are just very hard to come by. But that's the thing, like... That's the thing when you... you like, I'm talking... Surefire. So, like, you you can't just assume... Like, what if Otani didn't play another game? I feel like he has enough pitching and hitting accolades Already? combined with the MVPs. Already? That, yeah. He's a two-way player. I could... Yeah. His minimum is different. So, that's the thing, though. Like, it's kind of like... You can't assume a player is going to continue on their career trajectory. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's how you could say that someone's going to make the Hall of Fame or but not. Like but, those, like, those three guys, like... Kershaw, Scherzer, and Verlander, if they did not pitch another game in MLB, they're yeah. already in the Hall of Fame. Easy. Right? Easy, yeah. Joey Votto? No. No. I don't think he has enough accolades. I think he's going to go in the Hall of Very Good, where he'll be remembered multi-time. Ball. I just don't think he's going to be a, a Hall of Famer, as much as I would like him to. If you base his career off of like other first basemen who made the Hall of Fame, he just doesn't really... He's not really that close. But you could make a case. You can make a case for Joey Votto. You can make a case. I just don't think he's going to get in. 
I, a lot of people I know talk about that and say the same. Like, he, I mean, he's... That's a tough one. Joey Votto is a real tough one. You just like Joey Votto. Everyone likes Joey Votto. He's a great guy. I yeah. mean, yeah, he just retired, too. Happy retirement to you, Mr. Votto. Happy retirement, Joey Votto. If you're still watching. I mean, Joey Votto, MVP, six-time All-Star, Gold Glover. Played his whole career with the Reds. Ooh. I got a good one. Who? Salvador Perez. Yeah. Yep. That guy's longevity at the catcher position, the championships he brought, I I think he has a good chance to... Salvador really Perez is for sure in the Hall of Fame. That Royals team, man. They and he's really... still producing. Yeah. That's the thing with Salvador. Like, he's an old player, but he's still producing. Yeah, he really is. Let's... Let's... Like, okay, we were talking about players currently. What about, like, Yadi Molina, who retired last year? Um, based on his defensive metrics solely, I think he's one of the guys who gets in based on defense, not offense. Just well, he cat- wouldn't get in based on offense. Like, that's his thing. Yeah, yeah. Cat- catching is a different monster. Buster Posey? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, There's not been many MVP catchers. Like, Andrelton Simmons, the guy, no. the, the switch-hitting no. uh, shortstop. That guy plays such good defense, but at the shortstop position, you need a bat too, so that guy would not make the Hall of Fame. But if he's a catcher with that kind of defensive upside with no hitting, he could. If that makes sense. I mean... It's the positional need. Angelton Simmons is a long shot. His so, defense was top tier. I know it's top tier. That's fine. But he like how, like, he wasn't in the league for 20 years. He was in the league for a long time. Um, Mike Trout? Yeah. Uh, I think even though... We've talked about this before as well. Like, it sucks that he never has had the opportunity to shine in the playoffs. But shame I think, on the Angels yeah, for that. I think even so, Trout is for sure in there, undoubtedly. He should be free him, yeah, free my boy. I think he will be free this this upcoming year. I don't know about that. He's on contract. We'll see what has to happen to him. Let's see what has to happen. But, uh, yeah. Let's see what has to happen. So, what I mean, about, uh, I have a couple more. What about Madison Bumgarner? His peak was good enough. I don't know if he makes it, though. Um, one of the best hitting pitchers of all time as well, mm-hmm. which you have to factor in. I don't know how much that factors. Dude, he has, like, he, was, he, was, he wasn't a pitcher hitting in the lineup. Uh, he was good. He was good. He hit bombs. I'm looking that up. Madison Bumgarner was a good player. 19 career home runs. I mean, I'm not just talking about home runs, though. Either. I know, I know. Right. What he did in the playoffs was just second to none. He had like a point seven through an entire postseason where they won the championship and he closed it out. Unreal. Like, he, he's a Cy Young. He finished top five in Cy Young five times. He has a Cy Young award. Four-time All-Star. Mm-hmm. Like, the only thing with Mad Bum is like the D backs years. Yeah, they weren't great. And the part the fact that, they were terrible. The part that annoyed me about him those years was uh, where he would just cry about people pimping homers and stuff. Like it's like you get over it. You've thrown so many pitches at the major league level. Someone pimps a homer off you, get over it and strike him out next time. I mean, I hate when people cry about pimping homers. Let's like he has. She has a very. He's a four time All Star, three time World Series champion. Mm-hmm. Two-time Silver Slugger in the pitcher position, World Series MVP, and NLCS MVP. Those I, are some serious accolades. I don't know if he makes it, though, but... Those are some serious... He uh, has a case. I don't know if... It, like, Kershaw has done so much, so much for so long. He has the pitching triple crown. Like, he's done so much. He's fantastic. Kershaw is just... Uh, yeah. Speaking of pitchers, did Those you see that guy? Sure, did you see that guy in the Blue Jays? It was like a rookie pitcher or something, Bowden, and he had a no-hitter going into the ninth, and Bob Nightingale tweeted something special's going on, and then he gives up a home run. I hate Bob Nightingale. Bob. I'm not a fan of him. I don't think many people are. No, he's a, he's a Jerry Reinsdorf he's a puppet. He's a jack. Oh! Ooh, he just saw some bad news about the Cowboys. Should we talk about it, or should we wait? I want to, I want to, I have one more player. I wrote it down, we could wait on it. I have one more player. Bryce Harper. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just needs that ring. I think that Phillies team that might ring. get him a ring. He needs that ring. 
That guy, it's just no moment is too big for Bryce Harper. He is baseball's chosen one. He's just the coolest player. He's fantastic. Dude, he should he's almost a White Sox. He wasn't, he's not though. I know. Him and Machado. The Sox went all in one offseason, almost got both of them. They didn't get any of them. Yeah, my mama said they were able to see how many times uh, each player viewed the video that they sent to recruit him. Right. And they said Bryce Harper viewed the video over 70 times. <laughs> and then she's like, a lot of people in the in the office, like through the front office, think Harper actually will sign. Because he wanted to go to like a blue-collar kind of place, like mm-hmm. Philly or Chicago. Like the White Sox are like a kind of a blue-collar kind of uh, yeah, like sure. team, just a franchise. Mm-hmm. So are the Phillies. But, I mean, the Phillies actually spend money because Western Michigan alum, Dave Dombrowski... It's good GM. Shout out WMU, baby. Go Broncos. Go Broncos. I don't. Yeah, know. that was my last. That was my last player. I was like, I had a couple. Of- I asked you about Jose Ramirez. You never. Answered. Yeah, I think Jose, dude, that guy just steadily produces. He's the best third place MVP finisher of all time. <sighs> dude, I would. I, I mean, he. Shit. If you can give a guy like an MVP award after his career is over, like he earned, you know what I mean, like. Mm-hmm. Just combined, like, dude, that guy is just. I think he could. I think he could make so it. He's a good player. Um, what about what about Nolan Arenado? Last one, sorry. Ooh, yeah, he's like a ten-time Gold Glover, platinum glove, too. platinum glove. He's not just a Gold Glove; he's a platinum glove. Cabrian Hayes is dethroning him in the defensive end for platinum gloves, but I mean, yeah, Nolan Arenado. The only thing with him too is like the limited playoff. Limited playoffs, like all those years in the Rockies. Like. Baseball's different, though. Yeah. Like, basketball championships matter more because it's a smaller roster. You're more impactful to a championship team. But baseball, it's like, you got a lot of people. Championships do matter. I mean, like, that's the thing, though. When you're, like, talking about... If you have if you have two of the exact same players, right, competing for a Hall of Fame spot. Same accolades, multiple-time MVP, blah, blah, blah. But one of them has a World Series ring. You're obviously going to pick that guy. Uh, I don't know that's about the baseball. That su- that's the thing that sucks. Barry Bonds is considered the GOAT. And he but he'll never get in. I know, but, but the problem is with baseball, it's like you could theoretically hit six home runs in one game and no one else on the team could get a hit and your pitching staff could give up 12 runs. Yeah, that's that's baseball. just the kind of sport it is. That's baseball. Where it's like you're not going and you're hitting a home run and then you're pitching right after like basketball. You shoot a three and you wow. got to defend. like. It's just a different monster. But like, I mean, football. If you're the quarterback and your your team, your offense is putting up thirty points a game, but your defense is giving up thirty five. You know. Yeah, that Similar doesn't make things. a lot of sense. Similar things. Um, you know, just some uh, other baseball news. One, Scott Cervais has been fired from the Mariners. Yes, I think that's a, a long time move coming. That team has been such. Mired in mediocrity for so long that since they the, since they've come into existence in 1972, yeah, I think they've been. I think they've never been to the World Series. That 2001 year, they had the best record of all time, right? But they've never. The Mariners. I actually looked this up like earlier this week. I was like curious. I was, I looked up teams that have never won a World Series. I was just reading through. Like the Mariners have never even made a World Series. They've they've um. They've, I don't think they've ever won the division. Or maybe they've won the division. Dude, they had the best record in uh, baseball history in 2001. Oh, so they won it that year. That's for sure. But, I mean, they didn't even win it all, so it doesn't matter. No, let me... I This was actually a very interesting read. Um, yeah, founded in 1977, the Mariners have never advanced the World Series. They have five playoff appearances in their history. Like, that's abysmal. That's so bad. They've made three trips to the ALCS, 1995, <laughs> 2000, and 2001, but they've lost each time. That's what I like the most about baseball. It's like genuinely one of those sports where you could have the best record ever and some team that barely made the wild card wins. Yeah. No, that's like... They've been in the MLB since 1997, and they have never advanced. They've literally made the playoffs five times. Five times. Dude, they, they lost on the last day of the season last year, too. This is the saddest one. Can you guess what team? For what? Just, a, just like, all-time sad stat. What is it? Have they won a championship before? No. 
just all time mediocrity. The worst team just NL West team. The Rockies probably. Founded in nineteen ninety three. The Rockies have made one World Series appearance. They were swept by the by the Red Sox in two thousand seven. That's cool. And the Colorado Rockies have never won their division. That's horrendous. They've made five wild card bursts. They've never won the division since nineteen ninety three. That is It's twenty twenty that's thirty years. That's thirty one years of not making not winning your division. Yeah, it's also they've like, never won, like I can't even wrap my head around that. Like, I think I got a one up on that one. I don't, so I don't think they've ever had a Cy Young winner. Coors Field's like that. That's I mean, that's different though. Like that's individual yeah, stuff, but, but like in the end, what does that say about like just kind sure. of the pitching staff developments, the money spent? There, there's a lot to be said. I think they have had a Cy Young winner. I don't think they have. I think Ubaldo Jimenez yeah. was the closest, but I don't think he won it because I think he fell apart. The Rays, the Rays are the only one. Who what? Never had one. They've the Rays are the only club to not have a top three finisher. I don't. If that's such the niche stat, I'm pretty sure the Rockies never won a won a Cy Young. We're fact checking that right now. Nope, they're one of three teams that have not. Who are the other two? Rays, Rays. obviously. Rangers. Really? Who? Texas Rangers. Who? Nolan Ryan. He never won. He won them in L.A. Nolan Ryan. He didn't win one in Texas. Huh. He won them in the Angels. That's so crazy to me that the the Rangers never won one. No. Really? Dang. Just get DeGrom healthy, maybe that happens. You don't know Nolan Ryan never won a Cy Young, right? Is that actually true? Yeah. That's actually crazy. He's the <laughs> he's the definition of a journeyman. Well, not a journeyman, it's obviously... He's a Hall of Famer, yeah. Yeah, yeah but like... That he's guy, a journeyman Hall of Famer. That guy has thrown so many pitches, Eight-time so many All-Star. strikeouts. World Series, but he's a two-time ERA title as well. How do you not win Cy Young? That's same with uh, Kyle Hendricks. The stat that always pisses me off about Kyle Hendricks, everybody chat, is that, is that Kyle Hendricks has a ERA title, and he's had multiple years of a sub-three ERA, but he's never been an All-Star. The professor. Only Cub on the team since the World Series. Isn't the professor Greg Maddox? No. The professor is Kyra Hendricks. That, no. Chat? Chat or fact checking? <laughs> Dude. The professor is Kyle Hendricks. Greg Maddox is like the fucking surgeon. Pardon my language. I'm channeling my inner PFT today with the glasses on. Um... He's fact checking. What do you find? So Kyle Hendricks' nickname is the Professor, but one of Greg Maddox's nicknames was also the Professor. And Greg Maddox himself said he prefers being called the Professor instead of Mad Dog. I don't care what he prefers. He's Mad Dog. All right, but like before Kyle Hendricks was a thing, Greg Maddox was an absolute dog. Hey, Greg Maddox was a former. He was he was Professor One. Hendricks is Professor Two. Mm-hmm. Professor. Speaking Junior. of Greg Maddox, there's a documentary coming out about Greg Maddox. Have you seen clips of it? Yeah, I think I saw a clip of him saying that sometimes he would pick his pitches by how the pitcher or the catcher threw it back to his glove. Right. So like you couldn't even pick up those. That guy was a wizard. No, the that's that's him. how that's how that. that's how like so he called his own games. Mm-hmm. So that's how he called his pitches was like him and the catcher knew like however he caught the ball was the next pitch coming. So let's say he wanted a fastball, he would catch it out out front. Change up, he'd catch it at his chest. Curveball, let's say catch on the left, slide around, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how he would do it. Or he had these, like, little, like, he'd touch his ear, fastball. Or he'd, like, sn- or he'd, like you know, go for a little pine tar or something on his hat, change up. So he caught his own games. And those those are the clips that are coming out about the, the, the documentary, which mm-hmm. it's like, dude, if you're a baseball guy, that documentary would be awesome. 
I wonder if anyone's like he's all figured time. them out. No. They literally said like the short clip, like the trailer, they literally like the catcher was like, Yeah, nobody ever knew. It's like which is just awesome. Dude, there's such like a niche thing to do that it, it makes it's just like when you're telling me that right now, then it's like then you start looking it makes sense, but like I never would have thought to But the thing that I, I'm always was thinking is uh I went to an opening day where the White Sox played the Giants and we got Kopech got shelled. It was like home opener, not opening day. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was I saw a John Boy video and it was people in the Giants dugout. They saw him tipping his pitches, so it's like these little like cues and clues. You'd think someone right. would figure that out. But those are those are cues that every single MLB team and staff is looking for. You know, every team that's not cheating. No, it's not, on, it's not. No, it's not cheating at all. Like looking, like finding cues. So like, let's say that's the, what I'm saying. I'm surprised no one figured out Maddox. So let's say like a pit like Kopech, for example, like he's on the mound and it's, you know, after a couple and after three innings, you're like, okay, every time he's throwing off speed, he fidgets, he fidgets with his ball, like in the glove a little bit more. Like that's consistent. Or like every time he throws a fastball, he comes set very quickly. You know, some like just small cues like that, where it's, it's also not, it's not against the rules to, yeah. if your catcher is giving signs and you can see that like, it's not again, like, Hey, it's all part of the game. That's not what we have pitch com and you have some pitchers calling their own pitches, but imagine Maddox with pitch com. It wouldn't really matter because players didn't catch on to it, anyways. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like they were taught. Like it, he said, like the everything was so complex. Like they probably change the signs every game. You know what I mean? Like maybe one day catching it right here is a fastball, but the next start is a changeup. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, That's what I'm the, saying. So definitely would have figured it him out. Him and the catcher are just like so on the same page where it's like it doesn't matter. Who's the catcher for the Braves? All those years? <sighs> I don't remember, but like he was interviewed and he was like, the literally the clip of the of the trailer is like he literally saying. Nobody ever knew this, but he called his own game. You know what's crazy? If that guy ever left the team, he would have known that. Do you think... But you know how easy it is for these guys to just change it up. I'm just saying, do you think there's like a moral code between like a catcher and a pitcher for a battery thing where even if they they leave and go to separate teams, do you think that they're like, hey, like I'm going to give all these guys his signals and tendencies? Or do you think there's like a deep respect where like they're like, I'm not going to like give away all his shit because of like, you know, like patient confidentiality no. with like a, <laughs> yeah. like a therapist and so on. I know what you, I know, I understand you know what exactly what you're meaning. Yeah, like Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. Like I'll say Adam Wainwright left halfway through, you know what I mean? Like, and then mm-hmm. Molina's caught every single game he's pitched. But I don't, I mean, I think it is on the players and I think they're smart enough to know like, okay, this has been my guy for the last 10 years. He's gone now. We had such an established connection. This is what, what he knows. I'm going to change it. I mean, they're professionals at the end of the day. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to take risks like that. Yeah, no, that's true. I, it just makes you think, because there's definitely a conversation the guys have about it. Right. It definitely has to be something they talk about. For sure. But I, I was more or less thinking, like, like doctor-patient confidentiality. I like, know. I know exactly what you mean. It's a respect thing, but, like, at the end of the day, you're on different teams now. You're trying to win a ball game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The thing is... Like, a, a good defensive catcher is always admirable. That's why I laugh so hard when we got Martin Maldonado. Everyone's like, he's a catching wizard, even though his war numbers have been so bad the past few years. Hey, I don't know I don't know how much of a difference <laughs> it makes for a... Uh, <clears throat> like, let's say you're a, you're a pitcher and you have a catcher like Yadier Molina or Martin Maldonado. I don't know, like, how much of a... Like, let's say you have Corey Lee as your catcher. Versus Dog. Yadier Molina over the course of a season, would a pitcher's ERA be lower if they had Yadier Molina? Yes. Right. Yeah. Just for framing purposes, yeah, like easy. blah blah blah. You you literally comfortability see it with the, comfortability. Like a lot of teams who have two catchers, there's a lot of stats where they're like, like even with the White Sox, something I pay attention to is like when we had Giolito and we had James McCann at the time, he would always have a way lower ERA with James McCann than when Yasmani Grandal was up, it'd be like four up. And then he even, Definitely James McCann matters. called a no-hitter, too, for Giolito. Definitely matters. Yeah, like, it's like, these guys know. There are guys who really, really grind outside of the game as a catcher, and they know, like, all the pitchers, the hitters' tendencies, and they're good at that sh- shit, and you could tell, yeah. because, like, they're, like, obviously, they're framing, they're pitch calling, the way they run a game, you could see it. Yeah. Moving on to another little little topic. Continue with baseball, <clears throat> and then we'll get off baseball, we'll go to football. Yeah, the last thing I want to I say... Want, I want to say something. I want to say something. You have a note here. 
We all saw the Twitter video. Very wholesome moment. Salvador Perez pulling up in KC, playing a little wiffle ball game with the backyard in the backyard with the kids. Mm-hmm. Who is the player you would like to pull up to your wiffle ball game? Um, just an all-time guy, or like a current player? It's your pick. That, Who's the guy that you want pulling up to your wiffle ball game? See, my thing is, I would want to say Luis Robert. You can't see it, but I got a you big can say that. Auto- autograph jersey there. That would definitely be the guy where I'm like, this is the coolest, because that was the guy who was like the top prospect when I was like really getting into baseball, and then now that he's on the team, like that's my guy. But you can say whoever. The you only want. problem is like the English Spanish barrier. Like I want someone that I could be able to shop it up with. You know what I'm saying? That could. Be that would be shot. my pick for just my favorite baseball player, but like personality wise. I gotta Take your pick. This one. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about it. You go on who you pick. I know who I'm picking. Share it. Javier Baez. I'm taking Javi all the time. Javi? Dude. As a Cubs fan, he's my favorite He's my favorite baseball player of all time. The Wrigley Field has never been more electric when Javi Baez was on the team. The plays that that guy would make. El Mago. Stirring the bat. El Mago. Stirring the bat after a walk-off home run. Hitting a walk-off home run in the against the Giants in the NLCS. Gold Glover flashing up the middle. Like, that play he had against the Pirates where he he uh, hit a little chopper. Ran to first base. Ran all the way back. Runner scored. He runs all the way to second. Like That dude, was the craziest thing I've ever craziest seen. Craziest play in baseball history. Like, dude, just go to first base. <laughs> dude, but that's Javi Baez, though. <laughs> Like he's the he's El Mago he's the magician dude like I love Javi Baez it's a shame to see what his career has come to at this point but dude that's my guy he'll be a Chicago legend forever Chicago dude I'm telling you he is like dude it's if if you if he's on your team it's hard not to root for the guy unless you're a Tigers fan and he's like hitting below 200 and you're like dude get this guy off the field whatever but like. As a Cubs fan, it's impossible to not just love that guy. Because he played hard. Sure, he liked to swing at pitches seven feet out of the strike zone. That's, That's fine. Statement. That's why wiffle ball would be fun with him. Because mm-hmm. I could throw him some cheddar, you know what I mean? And he'd be chasing it. But, Javi Baez is my guy. That's who's who, that's pulling up to my game. I'm changing my answer. And I'm just straight up saying Shohei Otani. I think Shohei yeah. Otani <laughs> yeah, is, is going to go down in history as the best player of all time. We are watching a once in generation type guy. Like not even a once a gen like once every three no. gen like this is like the next Babe Ruth. Like Otani Go. Go. Uh, go. Yeah, the go. He he is just everything this guy does, he's so amazing. He's such like a a, a no controversy whatsoever. <laughs> like Dude, that wasn't on him. <laughs> dude, he got cr- That's controversy though. He uh, <laughs> When I said controversy, Dude, that's a, it was a, no, you're it was right, the you're biggest right. baseball controversy this season. You're right, you're right. When I'm saying controversy, I'm talking like Otani's not doing anything to be a head ass and no, get himself no, in any no, trouble. No, no, it weird. is not his fault that a guy he trusted for all these years stole a bunch of money from him. No, no. And, and people ragged on him, too. They're like, oh, like you would have known if he People ragged could. on him. It's people like, dude, all of us got, like, what? A couple thousand fucking dollars in our bank account? <laughs> and, like, we're going to know it. Yeah, yeah, you notice if it's gone. But when this guy has millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, yeah. a couple million, that's like you losing ten bucks. <laughs> so, no, you would not notice if you were Otani. That guy just got taken advantage of. Poor guy, eBay, headass. Headass of the week. What if he, what if he stole your wiffle balls? That'd just be crazy. <laughs> like, why would you steal the wiffle balls of anything? What if Otani was like, yeah, I'm going to take all this? He's like, yeah, it's mine. I'd be like, give me a sign ball and we're even. Well, I mean, you just talked about the Spanish to English barrier. He's not going to be able to speak to you. Dude, he speaks perfect English. Why do you have a translator then? Because he doesn't want to talk to the media. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if he speaks perfect English. I swear to God he speaks perfect English. I don't know if he speaks perfect English. Dude, he speaks perfect English. I promise you. There's literally videos of him speaking to people in English. Like he's fine. If you could have a translator, so that that makes that start. makes the translator situation even more. Exactly. That's why it was such a big thing. Yeah. So maybe he did know what was going on. Dude, those guys have like dietitians, nutritionists. Like they got people who cater. Well, you don't need a translator anymore. Everything. You can speak English. Speak English. Yeah, but part of the whole thing with that was I did a video back on this for the channel OGs. Was uh, Ipe worked with. Uh, Otani when he was a rookie for the Nippon Hand Bombers when in Japan mm. and then they got so tight they became best friends 
that he basically said, hey, the only way I'm going to sign with the Angels U is if you also sign Ipe as one of our staff members just so they could be best friends while he gets paid and they hang out. So he just like took the title of translator and would just answer things so he didn't have to talk to the media. And at the same time, what he would do is just get paid to be there with Otani. They did everything together. That guy just completely like betrayed his trust. I'm a big ham bomber guy. That'd be a cool ham bomber Otani jersey. Speaking of Otani, last... Okay, we're done with baseball after this. After I mentioned this. Okay? No, I got the Verdugo thing still. He sucks. Dude, that one's wild, though. He's not good. Otani is now another member of the 40-40 club. This is. Just continually glazing Otani over here. Mm-hmm. Like a donut? Like a glazed Krispy Kreme donut. You don't think you don't think of Otani as a guy that's just like stealing forty. You know what I mean? Like he sneakily does it. He sneakily does it. I think he's second in the league in uh, stolen bases behind none other than the fastest, second fastest guy in the MLB, Ellie Dela Cruz. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Who's the fastest guy in the MLB? I know who it is. I'm gonna say Bobby Witt just so I don't please you. It's Pete Crow Armstrong. Oh, sure. Speaking of Pete Crow Armstrong. Inside the Parker last night. I saw it. He circled the bases in 14 seconds. Last thing about baseball, had it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just because last night I went to courtesy of Brian. Of course, BK was a little bit sick last night, so he, we were planning on going to a uh, Sox game. We had four tickets, and he ended up not being able to go. So got a couple up. other, a couple other fellows went to the game, and I donated them to a good cause. We were, we were making some wagers on the game. Of course we were. Shout out Tigers. Thanks for covering minus one and a half. Appreciate it. But I also did make a live bet on the Chicago Cubs during the game. Because I saw on the scoreboard, I say, oh, they're beating Miami 3-2. Men on second and third. Nobody out. I was like, I'll bet on the Cubs. Miami had guys on base. And they ended up winning because Pete Armstrong went that bink. 14 second inside the park home run, then Miguel Amaya hit a bomb. And 14 then, seconds is so crazy. Here we are. Here we are. Rich. He's a very fast man. He's the fast guy in MLB. But 14 seconds around the bases. That's crazy. That's how we kill stuff. The real last baseball story we're going to go after. I saw a video. Shout out Fuzzy on Dude, YouTube. This is dumb. Alex Verdugo. Dumb. So he's been in a very bad slump. He's been having a pretty bad year. Yeah, it's dumb. That's what I want to share. Yeah. He's been having a pretty bad year. And it went so far, he went to the point where he went to see an allergenist just to see if he had any allergies. And it turns out that he has um, an allergy to cobalt and chromate, which is in tattoos, which he got some this year, and batting gloves, which he's wearing. So he would have an allergic reaction, and that's supposed to be the reason you're supposed to believe he's been in somewhat of a slump. I just okay. thought that was super interesting, and I had to mention it. I'm allergic to cobalt, and I have ta- like, oh, I'm just having an allergy attack 24 seven because I have a tattoo with a little bit of cobalt. In it. I think it was more of the batting gloves. What I do? You put your ba- how much? How much cobalt is in a batting glove? I don't know. I'm not. It's got to be trace glove amounts. Like, <clears throat> first of all, why is there cobalt in batting gloves? I, I don't know. Man. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not one of the guy. I'm not part of big batting glove. Like, what the heck is going on here? What are we doing? Why are we making batting gloves with cobalt and chromium? Whatever. Oh, they made paint with lead that they painted houses with. Remember yeah, that? That was a long time ago. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's some stuff that we're going to have. If I'm getting a batting glove, I better not have cobalt in it. <laughs> cobalt, yeah. Whatever. Alex Verdugo's not a good baseball player. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. He's a little fat, too. <coughs> he looks really weird with no he beard. He looks so weird. I hate that Yankees <laughs> rule. He looks terrible. <clears throat> Oof. Uh, cough, today, cough. Fellas. Cough, cough. Time to talk about football. <clears throat> Preseason's just about wrapped up as of tomorrow. And we, I'm pleased to say, week zero of the uh, college football season has come upon us. How do you even define week zero? Week zero is <clears throat> currently what's going on right now. I, I'm asking you to define it. Maybe you have one one game that actually means something, which we had today, which was Florida State versus Georgia Tech in Ireland. Oh, is that kind of like that Notre Dame game last year? Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's so week it's just zero. an early week one. Yeah, it's like an early. It's it's not. A, but like, 
it's an it's optional. So like Florida State scheduled this game, and they lost. Florida State is a number ten ranked team in the nation, and they lost to Georgia Tech today. First time Georgia Tech has been the top ten team since like twenty fourteen. They previously were zero and fifteen since then. Georgia Tech hit a walk off field goal today in Dublin, forty something yarder to upset. So like. That's the risk you take scheduling a week zero so they're game. Zero and one now. They're zero and one. Zero and one. This this it's counts. This Huffy counts. McGee. This counts. And then we've got games like it's it's a lot of like low low key games. Like tonight we've got Delaware State versus Hawaii, which is a thirty nine point yeah, spread. Like what game was the one we even got on in the background? I couldn't even tell you. It's an next. FCS game. So like Tarleton State was on earlier. Uh, New Mexico State played today versus Montana State. Like it's just week zero. All that matters is there's football. Like, these teams will have a bye week when, like, other teams don't, but, like... Yeah, so, that like, makes sense. They're going to play the same amount of games, but it's just week it's week zero. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Next week sense. is, like, the, like no, this is this counts to your record, like, it's not preseason. Like, this is a game Florida State thought, yeah, we're going to handle business. We're going to win. I mean, you'd think. And they lost. I, I'm pretty familiar with Georgia Tech. I was going to say, that's just a tough Georgia one. Tech's a classic triple option school. And uh, they actually have a quarterback that threw the ball today. But I think, I mean, the spread was, um, like, pregame spread was Florida State minus 10.5, and, and they lost by three. That is a dangerous game. Not for me, because I was on Georgia Tech. How'd you get that insider info? I was watching the game this morning, and Georgia Tech was keeping it close, and I saw a live bet for plus 6.5, and, and I said, let's ride. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. And we rode, and we won. And then... yeah. Went out for a little day drinks, Utopian Tailgate Benchmark in Chicago. Shout out. So another football game on TV, Montana State versus New Mexico State. So I'm looking. Montana State pregame favorite. I saw an opportunity to, to live bet them plus six and a half. What do they do? They win the game. Yes, sir. Some of us are hot, some of us are not. I'm just not even betting at all. I'm getting the bankroll up for, for NFL. Last night, Cubs, Tigers, today, Georgia Tech, Montana State. Maybe we'll bet on Hawaii tonight to cover the 39-point spread. What an interesting game. You got my attention. It's going to be on It's gonna be on at 11 p.m. Hawaii time. Shall the fellows get a gambling addiction going? Comment below. Not that we already have. We don't have one already. I'm a clean little fella right now. <laughs> oh, my God. We didn't even tap up. What's wrong it's with It's not us? an addiction if you win. It's not, but uh, it's not. speaking of addictions, triple options, a lot of that, mm. did you see that uh, interview where they're talking to Josh Allen about losing some fat and, uh, you know, leaning up a little bit? Yeah, he's he's, he's been on the six milli pepperminties. He says uh, he credits it to the Zins. So there's Nick a video of him. is a known appetite suppressant. It is. Call me a doctor. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I mean, why have a snack when you can just top a, toss a lip a of it? You don't need the snack. Well, unless you're hungry. Well, yeah, but if you're hungry, eat. But if you're looking at like a chocolate chip cookie and it's like chocolate chip cookie or a Zimbabwe. A double chunk chocolate cookie. A double cookie. chunk chocolate cookie and you have a Zin right there, you'd be like, oh, you know what? I don't want that right now because it's not going to be good for me in the long run. Let me have a Zin. Let me focus up. Let me get a little nicotine in the system. Suppress the appetite. Maybe have a black coffee with that. Ooh, black coffee is the way to go. Josh Allen. Looking good, buddy. Looking good. Yeah, but... uh we should have a lot more exciting news in the next coming weeks with the NFL season on the horizon. That's true. Plus, college football is just beginning. Well, yes, we have college football live right now. They're showing on television right now. Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah, just so, beginning, as I said. I like Georgia Tech. They're, like That's a team, the Yellow Jackets, they always fight hard. Like That's a team where it's like, man, even going past seasons, like they play Alabama, they play LSU, like they play big teams. But it's like, dude, they run the triple option and... You never know what can happen with an option team. Like, if it's your day, it's your day. You yeah. know what I mean? If you're dominating the line of scrimmage, like, they're showing highlights of the game right now, and it's just all running plays. Like, man, you dominate. Georgia Tech or Florida State quarterback, you know who it is? No. DJ Ungavalele. Remember the him? Lion. Do you remember who that is? No. He was like the number one recruit a couple years ago. He played at Clemson behind the. Uh, Trevor Lawrence? I haven't been too deep in college football. Like, honestly, last year was the first year I started really watching it. 
or a year or two. Casual over here. I uh, yeah, I'm try- I'm trying to get out of it. But um, no, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys know DJ Ungavalele. He was uh, he was the promised boy after Trevor Lawrence. Like Trevor Lawrence was going to go to the league, and everyone like everyone at Clemson was like, all right, doesn't matter. We got another Trevor Lawrence right here. DJ played like crap. He transferred last year. I don't even know where he went, and now he's at uh, Florida State. And he looked terrible today. Why do you not punt that? College, college football is so much fun. It is? I love it. So we will definitely get more in the groove of it when it comes around. Oh yeah, next week we got we got uh, top 25 matchups, baby. Let's go. Time to toss some college ball on the TV. Well, we had... I texted my dad this morning. I was like, one college football game in, one upset. Like, yeah, actually, there's a there's an upset. I think it was uh, it was number thirteen LSU, <laughs> and they beat number four Texas. Wow. At LSU. Wow. I'm just kidding. That was a real. I smoked his ass in uh, NCAA, and I'm just reminding him. <laughs> you smoked me. But mm-hmm. I was an upset. Oh, dude, I dropped sixty on you. You didn't drop sixty on 59. me. Fifty nine. You dropped forty nine. Forty nine. It was fifty nine. It was forty nine. Right, it was fifty. It was forty nine. All right, was it might have been thirty nine. It was not thirty. It was a close game, nonetheless. No, Don't worry, not. we're going to have a lot more games to play. Yeah, and I'm going to bring the same victory message. No. You well, won't, buddy, old boy, yeah, guy, old yeah. pal. Well, we don't, you want to talk about 2K? That's okay. Mm, that's okay. I won all the football games. Fine. But yeah, other than that, NFL season coming up, we got fantasy coming up as well. We had the uh, Hard Knocks episode 3 come out this past week. Caleb Williams is becoming a lovable figure in the eyes of America. And he had a feature interview on Pardon My Take, which was pretty cool because Pardon My Take is awesome. I listen to Pardon My Take all the time. And it's not often that they get, I mean, they get big guests, but like guys like that, like it's just cool because Big Cat's also this huge Bears fan. So he was just, I mean, that was just cool to listen to. But he's awesome. He's going to be so good. I think Caleb Williams is going to be very good as well. The Bears are, the Bears preseason 2024 is a, Super Bowl preseason team. I could see them making the playoffs. I could see them making the playoffs, too. They got a good team. They got a good team. They do got a good team. They made a couple of depth deals this past week, so I'm excited. The Bears are on the come up? Yeah. Undoubtedly. Seed Lamb going to play this season? I don't know. I know Duran Bland's out six to eight weeks with a foot injury, and that's what I was like, oh, about. And we said we'd get to later, so there's that. That sucks. Yeah. It's like Trayvon Diggs last year. Gets hurt. Like, it's, it's already started. Injuries are the worst, especially when they happen to your team. Because you're just like, Ugh. Yeah, but if that starter no. quarterback of another team is out, you're like, oh, no, that sucks. But you're like, yeah. For the, yeah, like, for if you're rooting, yeah, like, if you're, if you're a Bills fan and Aaron Rodgers went down last year, what do you expect from him this season? Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, what do you expect from him? I expect a good season. What's good season? All star, like four thousand passing yards, four thousand passing yards, thirty plus passing TDs. You expect that out of yeah. him? Yeah. He's an old boy. Pro Bowl. I mean, he's still Aaron Rodgers. You think he's a Pro Bowler? Yeah, he's still Aaron Rodgers. He is. He just got. He just got hurt. Everyone counted him out because he's hurt. Aaron Rodgers is so good. He is really good. Hall of Famer. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly Hall of Famer. Speaking of fantasy football, what are some good fantasy football punishment ideas? Uh, my personal favorite would be, so you and all the people in your fantasy league, you go to Walmart, you go to the furthest corner wow. in the Walmart, everyone else takes out a phone and they start recording the guy who got last place and you all start yelling at him, he's here to meet a 14 year old boy for sex. And then you have to chase him out of the Walmart while doing that and yelling that at him and recording him. pretty ruthless or uh your punishment is you have to go to the bar one night but you're not allowed to speak so we'll call like helen keller so you have to type out or yeah everything you want to say you have to bring out a notepad and write out like hand so that's your words are one. limited because once the words one. are done on the notepad you're done so that's just for one night that's a good one it is a good one that's a good one it's a good one you got any? <laughs> yeah a good one i mean same thing like making whoever got like last place 
like it it involves going out with the whole crew. You know, like you make them wear something outrageous to the bar. Like they let's have say to it's, do it though. Like, Everyone has to bully the person if they don't do it. Like let's say it's like midsummer and you like make them wear like a crazy Halloween costume, or like you make them wear like wear a, a mini skirt or something, or, or a put clown makeup costume, on. do it like a baseball game, or like or like high heels. Mm-hmm. Like you just make them do something crazy. Um, or another good one it's is not like crazy over here. It's like it's like like you have to do like the blazing challenge, Buffalo Wild Wings. I think um, the IHOP one is stupid. The IHOP one, what is it? Twenty four pancakes, and every pancake you get like an hour off. It's, I think it's so stupid. It's a lot of pancakes. I know, but it's just it's just stupid. It's everyone has, too. everyone has done it. It's like not even original. You know what I mean? I feel like that's that's one for like one year. It should have been huge, and then it just needs to be dropped off. It's it sucks. What if you, what if what if you did like relegation? Like if you get last place, you have to you have to get you out of the league in the next year. That'd be tough. That'd just be tough. That'd be that. There probably is a thing for like super competitive leagues. Relegation like dropped. Yeah, it's like relegation sucks. Cause if I know Dude, I'm out the next suck. year, I'd just like be like, all right, see ya. Dude, like that would suck. Relegation. That's a bad one. That would that one that one's the most hurtful for sure. For sure. Um. There's gotta be another good one. I don't know, like, call your boss and tell him that you've been arrested and need to be bailed out and then turn your phone in airplane mode? Well, it's like, you call your mom. Not your boss. Why would you call your boss? The stakes are high. Don't lose. Well, dude, then you, like, lose your job. <laughs> then, get, <laughs> then, then don't get last place. Everyone who gets suck. last place in a fantasy football league, what always happens is they give up some way midway through and they just don't set lineups. Well, then, and then they complain at the end, like, oh, I'm not doing it. Like, I didn't, like it's like, dude, you have to do it. Shout out Cody. He didn't do it. His punishment. L for you. Yeah, Cody. He's supposed to wear a dress to uh, the bar we're at in Western Michigan. He never did it. He bitched out. Yeah, it's terrible. It's I terrible. wouldn't do that. I still remember that. Hold the grudge against him. <coughs> Bless you. Ow. Ow, that actually hurt. That's a good one, though. Yeah, basically anything that's just like... It's, it's, it's typically an embarrassing thing. Like, if something embarrassing has to happen to you. You have to suffer the consequences of last place. I actually saw a really cool thing, um, not to do with fantasy football, but like, this guy uh, had a had a bachelor party or a wedding or something, and his whole like, I don't know, groomsmen, he like he bought them all, um, like the, his you know like you give gifts like whoever's getting married yeah like, yeah, yeah, gifts. yeah yeah his I think he has a wedding in Vegas and the gift to all of his groomsmen was a future, like a hundred dollar future bet for their NFL team to win the championship. That's still pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? That is pretty cool. Like, what, like that. what team was it? Huh? What team was it? Like whoever, like so. Let's say there's <laughs> ten of ten guys. Oh, their so all their team favorite teams. Yeah. Are. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right. Until you're like uh, like a Redskins fan, and you're like, <sighs> well, I mean, maybe they're. I don't know. Like that was just like, a, but it's like that's pretty cool. You know, maybe it wasn't. Uh, maybe if you were like a yeah, like a Commanders fan, like he would buy you a future for like three years down the line. Like something more realistic. I I just I heard a really good punishment that just reminded me of the wedding. So when you said wedding, I instantly hopped to Vegas for some reason. What do you have to get married <clears throat> in Vegas? Huh? <laughs> no 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 no. You uh so you plan at the end of the season. There's a guys trip with all the fellows to Vegas, and then the last place has to get there a day early. But you have all of their credit cards. All they have is their ID and twenty dollars in cash. So then they have to survive a whole a day. 24 hours, yeah. Yeah, they I've have to survive that. a whole 24 hours until you could all check in. And they're allowed to gamble, double the money, make more, do whatever, or lose it all, but they have to be there a whole day before you guys get there. That's a good one. Yeah, because you actually could get out of it by a few good like, like a few good hands. You could get out of it, or you could just like meander around for 24 hours, you know what I mean? Like Just like eat at McDonald's twice. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's all you have to do. I mean, yeah, that's a true, like, find your own way, build your own path. Yeah, but you, the, the, I guess the caveat would be you can't tell anyone about the challenge or ask people no, for yeah. money. Because that's, like, the thing. It's, like, you could easily just be like, yo, like, give me 10 bucks. Yeah. Some, someone, yo, give me some 10 bucks. Dude, you just make 10 grand at a table. Oh, yeah, he's going to give you a $100 chip. chip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. Or I saw another good one was um, all the fellas... They go on like a, they go to a really nice golf course, like a destination golf course after the season, mm-hmm. and then last place has to caddy. They don't get to play, but they have to caddy. 
Oh, that sucks. Like, they have to wear, like, the the trousers and stuff, like, of the all-white outfit. Dude. Like, you go to a destination golf course, or, like, you like, Pebble Beach or something, like, that you'd only play, like, once in a lifetime, and you're the one, like, you don't get to play. You have to just walk and caddy for everybody. That's You have horrible. to carry clubs. You have to find balls in the grass, but you don't get to play. That's actually terrible. <laughs> That's really the worst I've ever heard. Isn't that, that that's it? That's like that's a tough one. I'd rather be. And you have like, to wear you have to wear the outfit too and carry the clubs. If any of you fellas got a good suggestion for fantasy football punishments, go ahead and uh, drop it in the shot. Yeah, and we'll do. We'll use it. We'll use it. He'll he'll do it. I won't. I will. I I consistently finish top three in my leagues. Two second place finishes back to back years. First loser, dude. I know. I've been commish of a league for the past four years, and I've made the playoffs four out of four years. I've won once, and I finished top three three times. So this year will be the fifth season of the league. That's a pretty good rep. It is like ten games over five hundred all time. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Surely is not. It's fantastic. Right. But yeah, fantasy football caught up. Good luck on your drafts, everybody. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Gotta... Drafts should be actually coming up this week. I'm actually in the process of trying to schedule mine right now. That's the hardest part about fantasy football is scheduling the draft. I need to hop in a league still. Finding that, finding out, um, like, finding a time that works for everybody is just horrible. It's the it worst. is, it is. That's where I like the idea of just like, Picking a time like three weeks out and be like, all right, it's going to be Tuesday night, September 1st at 8 p.m. Or ever meets Like three up weeks out. Not even that, but just like, it's like you schedule it like three weeks away and you're like, put this on your calendar. Like, yeah. this is what you're doing that night. Mm-hmm. Like, don't give me an excuse. Like, you're doing this. Like, make And there's time always for kids it. who are going to give the excuse. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, dude, I'm sorry. Like, I'm at the gym right now. It's like, dude, you knew about this for the last three weeks. It's like, hard to get a serious like league ever because you could get a lot of kids who are serious then you get a couple guys who are like half in and that's just not fun i don't think it's like hard to get a serious league like i've like the league i've had for the past couple years like dude it's been great like everybody's been like in it the whole way you know what i mean like even if you're even if you're like have two wins going into like the last week of the season like i feel like even if you're in that spot like you're still the guy that's like all right i want to make sure that you know Hey, I'm playing a guy that's on a play on playoff fringe spot. Like I want to beat him so he doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I did that. Uh, remember or that? Like, or we... like even sk- like when you're <coughs> last place, like you get first pick on the waivers, just like screwing everybody else over, like, yeah. taking the guy. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember that one year where they put Taysom Hill at tight end, even though he started at quarterback? I had him. For I picked MMA. him up that week, and I knocked a kid out of the playoffs because of that, and bumped myself into it because of that. Well, and then they changed it like two weeks later. They didn't, I know, but they only made him. They only let him play. That was the thing. It's like everyone was really mad about that move, but I read it and I instantly went to the waivers. That was a that's the thing. If you were not paying attention and reading outside information, right? Like you were just not going to be good at fo- fantasy football. You need like, to like pay attention to it. That's the definition of a waiver like waiver winner fantasy like fantasy league right there like dude yeah. like that dude was like scoring 20 points from the tight end position where it's like there's literally like two or three tight ends that are solid and the rest are just mid mm-hmm. so yeah so uh jvd we got anything else for today is that a good point i think it's pretty good yeah a lot of baseball banter today a lot yeah. of football banter it's that's uh, fine it's that it's about that time it'll, it'll switch over it'll switch over for sure undoubtedly all right Cheers. Big old cheers and cheers to the fellas. W's in the shot for everybody. The dad. Oh, of course. How could I forget? All right. Ready? Over there. Ready? Oh, that was really good. Crispy.